Fantastic. Well, very warm welcome to all of you. If this is your first time here at Holy Trinity, we've been here longer than me, you are very, very welcome. And a special welcome to those joining us online as well. It's fantastic to have you with us. So, a few things before we start. Um, in the event of a fire, the fire exits are here and here and also uh, at the back. Uh, and we have a toilet, which is through the vestry door here. So the door here, there's another door and then another door. So just keep going right and you'll find it in the corner. Um, so a quick shape of how this morning will look. Uh, in a few moments, we'll have uh, time of open worship, uh, led by Ian and the musicians here, uh, during which time in the middle of that, uh, children will go out to their groups. And for children aged five and upwards, uh, they can be guided safely by Leslie and the team up the road to the church office where they're going to have uh, a lot of fun uh, and enjoyable activities there. So uh, children under five, uh, we have a creche space, which is here to my right. Um, there's activities there for them, but we'd ask that you supervise them during the service if you can, um, because there isn't any official supervision. Um, don't worry if your child needs to move or run about during the service. We're really open to, to all of that. Don't you worry. We're just very thankful to God that we have the next generation here with us today. So the children will have gone out. Uh, we will have sung. We'll have a time of waiting on God. We're there if you have any pictures or words. If God uh, shared anything with you this morning or during this week that you feel you need to share with the church, then please feel free to do that then. Uh, we'll have Bible readings, how it will bring us our message, which is about the church as the wonderful bride of Christ. Uh, we will sing again, and then the children will come back to you from their groups. So don't worry, you don't have to go and get them, they'll come to you. Fantastic. So as we start, we may have had a week of joy and closeness to God, or we may have had trials and temptations sadness and we may be coming here feeling actually quite empty so as christ's wonderful body in this place we bring all of this to him now in a moment of quiet uh, let's maybe close our eyes and lift our hearts to him and wherever we are this morning let's ask him to meet us afresh there Psalm 100 says this, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs, know that the Lord is God, it is he who has made us and we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Amen. Amen. Okay, children. I don't know if there's any around the corner, but if so if you want to come and join us, uh, we're going to be singing, saying, come let us worship our king. But I'd really like you to model some things for me. Because one of the lines goes, we dance in your freedom. We'll model what it's like to be old people, okay? <laughs> I'd really like you to model for us what it's like to dance in the freedom of God. Because he is here, he's got his arms ready, wide and open for you because he loves you. So if you want to get up and... I do dad dancing lessons later. <laughs> but if you want to do some real free dancing, then... Do join in, please. A stand to sing. Come, let us worship our King. You can wave them around. You can jump. You can dance. Let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. 
See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. He's our hero. Yes, so oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captain and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great. So we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, I say. you for those. You're going to do great things in the lives of the people here, both young and old. And we thank you so much for that. Children, you need to know that uh, we have a God who loves you. I don't care what anybody else says. You know, he loves you just as you are. And he wants to hold you and be with you because he's done amazing things. Amazing things for you. All those things that you think, oh, I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. And he says, yes, you are. And he loves you for it. I'm going to sing, this is amazing grace. And sometime during this song, Leslie might well say, come and join me. And we'll go and find out more about this. Okay. Breaks the power. 
breaks the power of sin and darkness Whose love is mighty and so much stronger The King of glory, the King above all kings Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder And leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. Would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. He brings our chaos, He brings our chaos back into order. He makes the orphan. Oh, that 
So reluctant, so reluctant. Do you know what I, I think is so often our children, young people are a bit invisible? Um, not to their families, we know that. <laughs> but do you know, they sort of, they don't creep out, but they sort of steal away while we're enjoying sun worship, and that's, that's great. But do you know, I just really feel today we ought to, to love these youngsters. Amen. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So I think as a family, we ought to pray an anointing prayer on our youngsters. And I just want to ask you a question. How many of us here today in church heard the gospel at a young person's group or Sunday school or something like that? Would you just put your hand up? Yeah, I know some of us didn't and, and you know that, that was the way it was. But those of us that grew up in a church fellowship, um, do you remember when you were like this? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I was always naughty and sent out. If I tell you I was a cub and then I never made it to scouts, you'll get the impression. <laughs> but listen, I don't want you to think that um, you know being naughty is a good thing because I get away with that. But I did ask one of the young people today, would, would she like to come and preach? And the answer Isla gave me was yes! <laughs> so Isla, I'm going to I'm going to come and get you at preach time. <laughs> Don't know what she's going to say. Yeah, mum. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, no. no. <laughs> but uh, seriously, it's really important that we pray anointing prayers on their growth, our growth as a family, but also as, as young people, isn't it? Amen. So um, just having yanked them up here, and obviously for Leslie and the whole team that work with all of the youngsters, we're so grateful for them. Leslie, we value you. So, Lord, we want to pray a rich, rich blessing on these young people. And maybe, youngsters, you want to just open your hands or just cup your hands or just turn your face upwards because God blesses the upturned faces of his people. And, Lord, we want to pray a blessing in the name of Jesus over these youngsters that you'd fill them with your spirit. Even now, we remember that John in his mother's womb, and Jesus too, in their mother's wombs, were filled with the Holy Spirit. And we pray that for our youngsters, every single one of them, that your Holy Spirit would anoint them for good works in the name of Jesus. And that you would bring through a generation of deep, rich faith through the work of our leaders. Lord, we love them. May they always know that they're precious, that they're special, and that you have your hands around them. Because we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Should we give him a round of applause? I'm just going to invite the children as they leave. What I think would be really nice, I just what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to walk up that way and, and go out to the left. And as you do, just have a look at that cross again. And as you do, just think of what Jesus did for you because he loves you so much. Have a great time. Off you go. Just have a look at it as you go. You too are like one of those lights, a shining light for Jesus as part of his body here. Bless them. Have a great time, guys. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll 
worship your holy name. Let's sing that again. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun has come up. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song.
live this life to be together as one. But he's got so much more for us. He's got something for you and for me to be doing. To bring glory to his name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Sing out and in our hearts, bless the Lord. And bless the Lord, oh my soul. interesting that uh, talk about uh, shoes for training shoes you've got on are they the ones that uh, you need to overcome the, the ground that's before you the ones that will keep you safe that will support you could be the people around you groups you belong to Spend a minute or two just contemplating that.
We still have a couple of minutes if there's anything anyone feels God's putting on their heart and they'd like to come up and share. Please do so. I just want to thank oh gosh, I'm not is that all right? um, everyone that's been praying for my mum. Some of you may know that Peter and I are almost full-time carers for my little mum, who's nearly 95, um, in end-stage heart failure. But on Friday last week, when I was at work, I just do one shift on the trauma unit, she fell and ended up on the trauma unit um, with a broken hip. Uh, the surgery obviously wasn't the issue, it was her heart, so um, they gave her a block rather than the general anaesthetic, which would have finished her off, I think. Um, and she's come through <laughs> remarkably well, she survived the operation. Um, so, you know, that in itself is a miracle. Um, she's actually walking now, um, in a lot of pain. But uh, so much so that they've shipped her down to St Mike's um, for a bit more rehab before she comes home. Obviously, we'll then be there, I, I guess, permanently. Um, she is actually struggling with her heart and with her breathing and breathlessness. But the best thing is, my mum's always had a faith. She's always believed in God, but never really wanted to um, share that with me or... I've said, Mummy, let's pray together. She said, no, 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 it's very private, darling. I don't want to discuss it. But um, this week, because I've been able to be with her every single day, um, obviously I've been working, but I've been able to spend my break times with her and the end of the day with her. Um, we've prayed together, and it's just been so wonderful um, to have that time with her. And I just want to thank you. Continue to pray. But, you know, even in sort of what we would call challenging times, we were singing that hymn, um, you know, my soul, my soul will go on singing, even though I'm coming to the end of my life, you'll be there with me. And I just feel so held. So, and people on the ward have also noticed um, that there is a real grace about when we're together. People have said that to me. And that's, I mean, we know where, that, we know where that's come from. It's certainly not from me. But um, I just want to thank you. So we just pray um, together. That would be lovely. Oh, Father God, we do just thank you for this amazing privilege, this family here in Holy Trinity, that we can hold each other up um, in prayer. We just thank you that we have that and we can share in that. Lord, we just thank you that, um, you know, the world can take away our things, the world can take away our stuff, our position, our health even our loved ones, but they can't take Jesus away from us because you're in our heart. Your awesomeness, your majesty, your grace, your sufficiency, and your love for us will carry us through all eternity. And you walk with us for every breath we take in this life and in the kingdom life to come. Oh, we just thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Amen. Amen. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Um, at, at the beginning of the service, I had a, a picture. It's one of those things you feel very foolish giving, but um, I just I know God is wanting me to say it, so um, it's uh, it's of a boiled egg, half peeled. And it's being kind of offered, and the sense of, you know, an egg is new life, but I'm not going to try and interpret it. I'll just share it with you. And in the worship, I just saw snow coming down, like big flakes coming down, and I was reminded of that, um, those words in Isaiah when it says that as the snow and rain come down, cause the earth to bud and, bud and flourish, um, so my word goes out, it will accomplish what I set out for it to do. Thank you both. That's absolutely fantastic. So let's just take a quick moment to think about what we've heard. Yes, Lord, we thank you for the rain and the snow. We thank you for that wonderful picture.
We pray that you will shower your blessings down on us in such a way and that we will allow ourselves to, to get wet. We won't be afraid. We won't run for shelter. Our Lord, come by the power of your Holy Spirit now, we pray. In Jesus' name, yeah. Amen. 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 Okay, so we've got some notices quickly. Um, so, where are we? Johnny, Leslie, do you be able to come up and share a little bit about the Church Away Day? That would be great. We've got the church away day coming up, and I thought it would be good to find out a bit more information. So I'm going to ask Johnny some questions, and he'll ably answer them, I'm sure. So, when is our church away day, Johnny? Uh, Church away day is on the 12th of March, on Saturday, so a few weeks away. So, yeah, it's very exciting. Excellent. And uh, what time is it? (laughs) Good question. Uh, No, I do know the answer. It's 9.30 till... 4.30. 4.30. Okay. Um, so it's a full day, but we will make sure you are adequately nourished and fed in all ways, spiritual and physical. Um, okay, so can I park my car? You can park your car, yes. Parking is available. So. But where, where are we going, first of all? Well, that's, that's <laughs> the key thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> thankfully, not too far. Um, we're just going over to Mevagissi, and it's not the sports centre, is it? It's the activities centre. Yeah. There we go. In Mevagissi, so yes. So straight down the hill, immediately right. Don't get caught up in the little one way. Immediately right at the bottom of the hill. Okay, and parking available. Fantastic. So what are we going to be doing? Yeah, that's the key thing, isn't it? Um, Well, I'm told that as a church, um, you've always had very fond memories, um, at least some people have told me anyway, um, of Hotel California and all that you used to do on your weekend away. Um, Well, you may have noticed we're having a a one day away um, rather than a weekend this time. And as we've already said in Mevagissi, but yeah, really, it's a time to gather together, um, to be together for the first time properly, really, as a whole church away for the day, which, you know, is really encouraging in itself. Um, But yeah, really, there'll be multiple opportunities to do lots of things. So the the whole day is really supposed to be family friendly. So there's going to be activities for all of the kids, you know, young, old, whatever age you feel. Um, We're going to make sure there's something there for you. But I think part of that as well, there's a real heart, isn't there, to engage the younger generation with the whole thing. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Yes, I think we feel a bit like seeing the children this morning. We want our children to feel part and parcel of everything that we do. Um, A family is made up of a variety of generations, and so our children and young people, whilst there'll be times when we'll take them out and we'll play some games with them and uh, we'll do some activities with them, there'll also be times where they'll stay in with us. We want them to join in the worship, be involved in prayer later on in the day, um, and in sharing the different ministries that are going on, they'll have an opportunity to share a little bit with you as well. Yeah, so just to say, so there'll be, there'll be various breaks during the day, there'll be time to just get to know one another. We realise that the church has changed quite considerably with lots of new people coming in and, and out and whatnot, so it'll be a great chance to get to know one another. But more importantly as well, um, Howard's going to be sharing something of the vision for the church and really what we see God doing with the church and where we're going. Um, as Leslie's alluded to as well, there'll be time for different ministries to share a little bit about what we're doing. But the key thing really as well is, is what's your part to play in that and how can you get involved with all of the amazing things that God wants to do through this church? Well, this is all sounding pretty fantastic. So yeah. how much is this Yeah, <laughs> that's the real question, isn't it? Um, it's £15 for an adult ticket. If you do have children, they go free. Um, and that provides all of your food and drink for the day. And I'm told we're going to finish with a, a little cream tea, aren't we? Well, so we're going to have coffee break. We're going to provide a lunch, buffet sandwiches style lunch, and then we're going to finish with a Cornish cream tea. So, do you say scone or scone? I say scone, the proper way. Even though you're so. like from quite up north, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of middle of the country, so I get to choose. So, ah, yeah, fair yeah. enough. I say scone. We're not actually going to have either. We're going to have something called splits, which apparently is very Cornish. So yeah, I, don't, I don't actually know what splits are. but It will be something to discover on the day, something yeah. that we don't know. Yeah, maybe how I can demonstrate what the splits are. I'd like to see that. Yeah. So 
So, with all that in mind, we would love as many of you as possible to join us. We want to be church family together, and we appreciate that we haven't had the time or the opportunity to spend together that we would have liked to have done over this last season or so, and we're entering a new season now. So, how do I sign up? So to sign up, you can use Church Suite. Um, if you've got the app access, which if you've signed up to Church Suite, I've hopefully sent that out to everyone. You can pay directly via debit, credit card through the app. Or if you haven't got access to that, you can go on the website and you, on the front page is a banner that says Church Weekend, uh, sorry, not Weekend Away, Day Away. I keep saying that. Day Away. And you can sign up through Church Suite there. Failing that, you can ring the office or you can pop in and see us. There are multiple, multiple ways. But yeah, do you get signed up? I think we've already had about 10 people sign up in the last couple of days, and all we've done is put an email out there, so that's encouraging. But yeah, we really love to see as many of you as possible there. And you know, if finances is uh, you know, a difficulty, that's not a problem. Please come see us, because we want as many people to be able to come as possible. Any questions? Come to any of us, any of the staff team. Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great, thank you both. Uh, Jamie? Jamie's going to come and tell us about the Churches Together gathering. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Johnny and Leslie, for the hospital pass on the microphone. They weren't able to tag team as they had planned. I forgot about that. This microphone, by the way, you can stand quite far back if you're a bit scared, and it still picks you up. So hence we're trialling this one. But anyway, why I'm here, Churches Together hasn't been able to be together for some time because of the pandemic. Um, and this coming Sunday evening um, is going to be a chance to regather once again. It's going to be at the Baptist Church, so Sunday the 20th, Sunday week, at 6.30pm. Um, so that's, we're not going to meet in here and do our prayer and worship because we're going to meet with the churches together at the Baptist Church. So churches together is just is something I'm very passionate about. I think there's amazing unity and power when the church across de- denominations and styles and even some theological beliefs comes together and says, yeah, but our core belief is the same and we're here to build the kingdom of God. I think there's huge power in that. Um, So I'd really like to encourage as many of you to be there as you can. Um, As I say, there will be some prayer and worship, but there was also going to be some fresh vision for churches together, um, which is going to be really exciting to hear. So if you can be, uh, get down to the Baptist Church next Sunday um, and I'm sure you'll be blessed. Brilliant. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, And one more notice, just quickly. Um, So if anything during this uh, service has particularly spoken to you, or you feel there's things in your life that you'd really like prayer for or breakthrough uh, with, then please, we've got the prayer team. um, Howard, is that right? The prayer team will be in the St. Michael's Chapel, uh, just through there uh, at the end. So please go through, and they will be glad to listen to you and pray with you over anything you've got there. Thank you. Excellent. So... Right, in a moment, uh, Dale is going to come and bring us our Bible reading and Howard will preach, but can I just uh, quickly pray for them? Dear Lord, we thank you for all you've given us so far during this gathering. And Lord, we pray that as your word is read and is expounded to us, Lord, just bless our hearts and build us up in our faith and as the body of Christ and as your glorious bride. Lord, be with us now and bless Howard and Dale especially as they come to speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dale. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. So our reading today is from the book of Hosea, uh, chapter 2, verses 16 to 23. In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the Baals from her lips. No longer will their names be invoked. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the creatures that move along the ground. Bow and sword and battle I will abolish from the land, so that all may lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. In that day I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies, and they will respond to the earth. And the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show you my love to the one I called not my loved one. I will show to those called not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you, Dale. Um, if you don't know me, my name's Howard. I haven't been around for a while, but it's good to be back. And I'd like to add my thanks to those of you that have been praying for me and for Kay and our family, and indeed for the church over the last four months or so. Thank you sincerely for your prayers. Before we look at this passage, I just wanted to um, go back to the challenge that I gave you last week, which was uh, about finding the secret place. Those of you that were here, forgive me if you weren't here, but the secret place of ask, seek, and knock, if you remember. Just wondered if anybody had anything they wanted to share in about two sentences of what they've discovered. If you've forgotten all about of it, all, all about it, you are forgiven. Carol. I'm going to read, uh, say that back to you, Carol, because of the microphone, which won't pick you up. So you're saying that you, you sense God is far more willing to give than we receive. Thank you. Is that something that has come to you since last week? Thank you. God's generosity. Mike. Thank you. So Jonah chapter 2, Mike's been digging into that we forfeit the grace that God gives if we go after the idols of the world. Has anybody found just finding a secret place has been a blessing? One or two yeses, one or two. I do, I do ask you questions for you to follow up. You know that, don't you? <laughs> when I suggest something, it's like, I will ask you. And you can say no, of course. But... As we find the secret place, then we find the depths that then equip us for the life out in the open. Alex, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Alex. So Alex just said that rather than a shopping list of needs, she's maybe began to remember, she knows it already, but remember to wait and listen and actually, a relationship with God is, is, is about, uh, he is God and I am not. And so to go to him to listen is, seems wise to me, don't you think? <laughs> Thanks, Alex. I'm sure there's a lot more, but I wanted to give you the opportunity to show your homework. So, <laughs> so Hosea chapter 2, if you have it in front of you, that's great. 16 to 23 is what Dale read for us. And I want to unpack a little bit of what I, I sense God saying about the next three years as a church, particularly about our role as a church looking outwards to the community. So not the inward church stuff, but the outward church stuff. In other words, what sort of church are we going to be in three years' time? I once had a crush on a girl at school It was only a few years ago. She was called Ruth, and I can picture her now. And she was lovely. She, this, this is where it gets a little bit sticky. She was the daughter of the local Methodist minister. And I was a good Anglican. But she was beautiful, and she was graceful, and she was warm and friendly. She was just a beautiful girl. And she didn't give me one look. Do you know, disingenuous, disingenuous is not the word for it, Keith. But she didn't give me a look. And I remember vividly at Sixth Form College where she announced to our little friendship group that she was going out with Kevin. 
I've never liked the words name Kevin since. <laughs> it was devastating. Hosea, who is a minor prophet, writing about 900 years before Christ, has one theme in his book, and it is the unrequited love of God by his people. I knew how it felt to secretly dream about Ruth. You know how you do when you're a young boy, if you're male? It never happened. She did not give me a look. She had eyes for another. That song, I Only Have Eyes For You, didn't wash. She had eyes for another. And the people of God in Hosea, at the time of Hosea, have eyes for other gods. And they miss the blessing. And Israel have abandoned God. And if you read the book, it's quite challenging because most of it is actually quite negative. Not about us, but about the people of God. They're worshipping other gods. And Hosea, called by God, this is remarkable, to marry a woman, another woman, and commit adultery and marry a prostitute. And you think, well, that is crazy, isn't it? But what was happening was Israel was being shown by this prophet, Hosea, of how God viewed his people. They had adulterated themselves to other gods. It was a spiritual adultery as much as anything. And this applies today. This applies really closely to us because God's attitude to us is one of love. And yet the vast majority of the world, particularly in this nation, don't return his love. In fact, even we, the church, at times, don't return his love, do we? Other gods, as Mike prophetically said, get our attention. The people are unfaithful in the time of Hosea. They didn't return God's love. And what's his response? He gives. He gives. He doesn't go off in a huff, or as Lauren Hardy said, an hour and a huff. He just gives. He restores the relationship. And the reading that we've got today is a prophetic word to the people of Israel to say, I am going to restore our previous broken relationship. If you have it in front of you, you notice what he says. I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to restore the relationship. In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me husband and you will no longer call me my master. And so the relationship is going to become covenantal, not transactional. I'm going to love you as I always have and you are going to love me back. And you'll call me father. You will call me husband. Astonishingly, he promises betrothal. Verse 18. In that day, I will make a covenant for them, the people, with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the creatures that move along the ground, bow and sword and battle I will abolish. So peace will reign. And I will betroth you to me forever. Isn't that remarkable? What God says to his people is, I will be your husband, you will be my bride, and the covenant is, as it says there, in righteousness and justice and love and compassion. This is verse 19. I will betroth you in righteousness, in justice, in love, and in Compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. He puts us in to those relationships, not because of our own particular goodness, but he literally dunks you into faithfulness, justice, compassion and grace. It's like baptism, you know, like proper baptism, not this sprinkling lark, but actually immersion. The full immersion in compassion, right, Baptists, wake up, 
immersion in God's goodness. By the way, if you have been sprinkled, that's absolutely fine. (laughs) The Anglican canons say that's fine, but you might just want to think about immersion as well. Oh dear, the end of a good career. (laughs) How does God do this? I mean, how does God do this covenant thing, this marriage thing? Well, the New Testament helps us, because that's why we need to read the old alongside the new. He says, God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? He gave his only son. So that whosoever, so that's Jew or Gentile, man or woman, child, baby, disabled person, somebody who can't read, who can't sing, somebody who can't understand, if they will believe, they become immersed in righteousness, goodness, grace, compassion, and all the things that God says a marriage with him becomes. Isn't that absolutely amazing that he makes a covenant that he keeps? And we know from what Jesus said that if we fail, if we fall, if we mess up, then we confess our sins and he, God, is faithful and just, which are the two of the things that he immerses us in and so we carry on. And so if you're weighing heavily today, the wonderful news is Jesus gave himself so that you could be right with God and in a relationship with him. And this is where it really hits the rubber for St. Austell or from wherever you come from. The bride is who we are. We are the bride of Christ. If we're a Christian, if we follow Christ, we are the bride. If you walk down the high street, uh, you'll see this picture. Thank you, Dale. I saw it yesterday. You can see me, sorry about the reflection, (laughs) but don't worry about that. But just look, this is in one of the charity shop windows. And it just caught my eye, probably because I was thinking and pondering these things. But have you ever really thought what it means to be the bride of Christ? Now for us men, this is taking a little bit of a sideways step, okay? But the bride is collective, not singular, It's the body of Christ. It's the people of Christ. Men, women, children of both sexes. We somehow spiritually become the betrothed, which is what it promises here in Hosea. And if we read our New Testament carefully in the book of Ephesians, and I take marriage couples through this, and it's really, really awkward today in this current culture. Paul says, Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit or obey your husbands. And I can tell you that I get some funny looks from some of the couples that are sat in the office as we go through this. Because they don't get the covenantal nature of what God is saying. It's predisposed on husbands loving their wives. Wives are not supposed to obey their husbands when they're not being loved. And husbands cannot expect wives to obey or submit or allow them to lead if they don't do it out of love. And that's exactly the covenant in Hosea. I love you, you follow me. And so every man that is married, or not, can look at that picture and say, That's me. I am dressed in white. I am purified by the blood of Christ. And Jesus is my bridegroom. Why? Because he's already died for us. And that's why I said last week, every one of us in our hearts wants a mother who says, I love you. And everyone wants a father who says, I'll die for you. You didn't hear that if you weren't here last Sunday evening. But that's what we want, isn't it? Dads, die for your families. Switch the telly off and start loving them. Mums, let your husband lead the family. And you might say, well, he's pretty rubbish, Howard. 
you might say that. Then pray for him to be a good husband. What does a good husband mean? It means he's ready to lay down his life for his family, preferentially, and sometimes even physically. Who can respect a man that doesn't actually, uh, isn't prepared to die to themselves? But you'd follow such a person to the ends of the earth, wouldn't you? You can say yes if you like. I know I would. Some of the great leaders in my life, I'd follow through anything because I know they love me. I know they love me. And when someone loves you, you'll go to the ends of the earth to be with them and be a one with them and united with them and covenantally tied to them. So husbands, <laughs> February the 14th, tomorrow, get your cards Say you love them. Do something to say you love them. Don't just rely on the chocolates. Do something. And wives, let him be the one who leads the spiritual life of the family. And if he won't or can't, give him a nudge or a kick. Or leave the Bible open, as my father-in-law used to do, and my mother-in-law used to do, leave the Bible open at an apposite passage that he might read and amend his ways. The church, everyone, is a movement. It's not an institution. Please stop thinking of us as an institution. Otherwise, you may end up in one. It's not an institution, is it? It's a marriage between me and Jesus, between me and you as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're supposed to love one another because we've been immersed in the grace of Jesus. And there are some myths, not moths, myths that get in the cupboard. The first one is the church is a living organism, not a dead institution. Everything that Jesus taught about was organic. Just think about it. Sowing seed, harvest, being in the vine. They're organic images. Father went out to sow seed. It's not static. It's moving. It's organic. And so should the church be. So we must never, ever be stated as just done. There's always more to do. There's always more people to tell, more people to welcome. The second thing is it's more than a building. We talk of the church as the church, and it is a wonderful building here in HT, but it's not what Jesus really cares about. It's about you being in covenantal relationship with him. Also, the church is not limited to a single location, is it? But why do we behave as it is? Are you coming to church? Did you go to the service? I've banned the word service in the team. I really detest the word service. Do you know why? I take my car for a service. And they fiddle around with the oil and they drain that and they put new things in, pads on the wheels and off I go. It only has an occasional service once a year. The rest of the time, it just pootles along. That's the church. A service band. You've only said it four times today, Michael. You're doing all right. <laughs> Who's counting? It's a gathering. It's a gathering of God's people in one place to be nourished, encouraged, to share their testimony, to pray for one another, to teach the next generation and the youth. So the next two generations, be together, love one another, hear from God, get out the building, and then come back for another service in a year's time. But come for a gathering every week. Gatherings are banned, if you want to call them services, Michael. Michael. 
And the kingdom of God is therefore decentralized. The good old Church of England is very good at centralizing. Hierarchical, top down. But actually, every one of you are the light of Christ. Every one of you are God's emissaries. Every one of you is a spokesperson. Every one of you is able to be used for Jesus in wherever you work, live, and experience life. We have 168 hours in any given week. If, if you sleep for eight hours a night, you're down to, what, 80 or so. No, 110. If you then go to work for 40 hours, you're down to 80. What do you do with the rest of those 80 hours a week? If you think about it, you meet people. You have hobbies. You have a family. You have grandchildren. You have people that you rub up against and meet. You have people that you could invite for tea or coffee. You could invite them for a meal. You could invite them for a walk. You could just chew the fat, whatever that means. Couldn't you? And that's being church. Because wherever two or three are gathered, Jesus said, I am there. So get a mate, play some tennis, and see what God does. Get a friend, go for a walk, see what comes up in your conversations. I love Hosea 2 and 22. It's easy to remember. Let me read it to you to finish. And the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and the oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. What God says is, I am going to be betrothed to you, and it will be like the planting of seed and the fresh new oil and the wineskins full of new wine. I love it. Why? Because the grain is about God's word. The wine is about the Holy Spirit, and then the oil is about the anointing for ministry. That's what he promises. If you will be betrothed to me, picture's gone, if you will be betrothed to me, I will anoint you with the oil of gladness. I will fill you with the new wine of the Spirit, and you will sow seeds wherever you live or move or have your being, if you will remain betrothed and faithful to me, outside the building. And we do not have services. We have gatherings. Because when you gather, you come and tell us what's been going on. Whereas services, we tell you what we think you should hear. Well, give or take, with a bit of liturgy thrown in from the Desert Fathers who are nice people, by the way. And so every Christian has requited God's love, belongs to God's movement, and your sphere of life is unique to you, which is exactly what he wants you to do. So when you teach in a school, that's your field. If you're retired and you meet the neighbours, that's your field. If you are somebody who works in finance, that's your field. If you work in McDonald's, that's your field. If you're a vicar, don't have any fields. It's about knowing you're betrothed. I'd like you just to, as we finish, to think now, pray now. Just think about these areas. Your neighbours your hobbies, your work, and your family. In the front of my Bible, I have a list of people that I'm praying for. I'm not going to show it to anybody. There it is. It's been in my Bible for a long time. These are old neighbors of mine and old friends. I'm still praying for them. And do you know, I've got a list of when they became Christians, the dates. Steve, 1st of April, a fool, 2002. David, May 2002. Helen, 
October 2006. Chrissy, October 2003. Fred, 2015. And so on and so on. That's not to show off. That's to say, if you have a, an area of influence or ministry or work, that's the field that you sow in. And just watch what Jesus does. We are betrothed. As you think about your family, your friends, your work, ask the Holy Spirit to show you who you should be speaking to and in what way. Let him show you. Shall we pray together? Verse 22 of Hosea 2 says the earth will respond. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the earth will respond as we sow the seed of your good news. We ask you now that wherever we have been thinking, family, friends, work, neighbours, that they would respond to our presence our grace, our forgiveness, our love, our betrothal to you. And will we come back to our gathering ready to share what you're doing? Because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to respond um, in song to God. Um, if there's something to pray through, we'd love you to feel free at this time to go into St. Michael's here and pray with somebody. Lara, have you brought your sermon with you? Have you got your sermon? Yes. Oh, sorry, Isla. <laughs> yes? What, what have you got? You've got some verse? Come, come over here then, that's Okay. Brilliant. Why don't you read that for us? Just step down there, that's good. Go on, you read it. Be kind and loving to each other. Forgive each other just as God forgave you in Christ. Philippines 4, verse 32. Thank you. <laughs> feels like that's what being church feels like too, don't you think? Okay, so shall we um, hand back to Ian and... Um, if you'd like prayer or something has been stirred that you'd like to bring to God now, then just over here on the left would be, you'd be very welcome. Welcome back, everybody. We're going to finish um, with this song. And it's, it's a cov- it talks about the covenant. It talks about the promises of God. And that we can say that we, yes, because we know they're true. And amen, I'm up for that. So when you leave here, I'd encourage you to look at the promises, but also to go, yes, they're for me. And amen, I'm up for that. Let's go for our town. This is called Yes and Amen. Let's stand to sing. Yes and amen. All 
so much for that that's fantastic so let's um, all of the things we've heard today let's go away pondering them in our hearts and asking God what he wants to, to change in us uh, about them 
So that brings us to the end of our gathering time together. <laughs> I remembered. Um, very, very pleased you could be with us uh, online and here in person. It's fantastic. A um, couple of very quick things. Um, if you want prayer, please go through to the side chapel there. The team is uh, there waiting for you. Um, if we ask, just if you do, because of the close proximity, um, that you just wear a mask and they're provided there um, if you haven't got one. And uh, also, please sign up for the Church Away Day, uh, which is at Mevagissi, so it's through um, Church Suite or talking to one of us. Thank you very much. So, God bless you all. And one final blessing before we go. So may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Um, just before you disperse, I just want to say, uh, Michael, I do apologise uh, for calling you out this morning. That was unkind of me, and I'm really sorry. <laughs>